hooks. <sighs> I saw a comment a few lives back that uh, said that my sigh at the beginning of every live is somehow comforting. Um, I did not realize that I began every live with a sigh, but here we are. Uh, apparently I do. Thank you for pointing it out. Now I will be even more self-aware of my habits and patterns, um, which is something that I continually unravel as time goes on. Welcome to Sunday. It is now 7 p.m. New York City time. I am going to be washing some farmer's market greens and uh, maybe making some more vegan chili uh, and sipping on some milk tea and that's about it. Cool. <laughs> Hope you all have survived another week. Um, those of you who have passed away this week, welcome. Thank you for joining us from the spirit world. Let us know if it's any better in the other realm than it is here. Um, we could do with some good news, but don't lie to us. Um, yeah, that's it. What is Suhor? I have no idea what that is. It's time for you to educate me. I'm going to pop the chat out real fast. And we shall get started with our Sunday evening shenanigans. Hi Lando, you reached out to me on Instagram. Uh, for some reason your comment was like not displayed to me until after a week you had sent the message. So the delay of response was not intentional. I don't know what's going on with Instagram, but uh, a lot of features are being disabled. My story views are dropping like hot, hot potatoes. And my grid posts are also getting fewer likes than ever. Like before budget eats time view. Um, so I'm sure there's a big switch up in the algorithm of Instagram. If you are messaging me on Instagram and I'm not getting back to you, sometimes that is not intentional, sometimes it is, but sometimes it's not. Um, it hides new messages from never before chatted users into a requests folder. And sometimes there's no notification that pops up to signify that there is a request message. Um, that's Tuna in the background going crazy. I think she just pooped. And, uh, yes. Hi, Rhode Island. Um, hi, New Mexico. Um, hi, Chicago. And... That's right. Mini life updates. The septum ring is new as of Friday. Um, so I think this side is getting a little bit irritated and possibly inflamed. I'm hoping that it's not going to be infected like my ear was, but whatever, we're going to ride it out. Uh, it's in there. Um, it is 18 K gold this time. Your girl did not go cheap because she was not about to fuck up her nose even more. Um, so let's hope that the gold does not upset the skin as much as the titanium surgical steel or whatever the fuck it was that I opted for last time on my earlobe. Hello, Greece. Hello, Bangladesh. Um, I did not get a pet. I am cat sitting for my friend Devin um, while he's traveling and his cat Tuna is with me. Hello, sunny California. Okay, we're just gonna be washing greens and you're viewing this way because I have not gone live for several days and my phone was unfortunately not charged. So you're currently being juiced up. I'm going to be doing some really boring things. I went to the farmer's market late today because grandma did not wanna go out with me. So I ended up coming back home doing her laundry so that we could get all the pee stains out of her clothes as soon as possible. And then after I finished laundry, I went to the farmer's market and it was like an hour before closing time. So all the veggies that I usually buy for $4 were on sale, two bunches for $6. So I ended up buying four bunches for $12. 
Um, so I got a lot of greens to process. So we're gonna rinse off all the green leaf veggies so that they're ready for me to snack on. We're gonna trim off all of the stems that are a little bit more fibrous and we're gonna be working that into our vegan chili of the week. Um, it might not actually be vegan if I decide to put a ham hock in it, but the rest of the ingredients are going to be pretty vegan. So that's what we're doing. I'm also going to put those strawberries in the fridge before they rot. Those are for grandma. Um, hi NorCal, hi New Brunswick. And um, Lady Lucky Bug says, my subs are not even showing you live. You are being buried, but I did get the notification that you were live. Yeah, you know, we knew what was coming for us, right? These are tech platforms. They can mute you and silence you and relegate you to the bottom of the barrel whenever they want, whatever. I'm not concerned. Those who miss me will find me. Um, and even if the platform shuts me out, we'll find other ways of staying in touch, right? Um, so that's it. We'll be feeding tuna at some point too tonight on tonight's live. Thank you for joining me. Hope you've had an okay week. Can anybody, ooh. can anybody identify what these greens are? Because I was grabbing them in a rush and I didn't even think to ask because I was having trouble sticking them into my bags without crushing them. But if you know what these are, let me know. They smell kind of like shiso leaves. Um, but yeah, I thought these were a steal. Like of greens oh my gosh I feel like a feather boa lady right now um, with edible greens if I could make weird fashion designs I would make dresses out of wilting greens like they would be fresh in time for the show but they would be wilted by the time the show ends um, three dollars tuna what are you doing what are you doing, baby? Oh my lord. She's got a sudden burst of energy. I don't know what's happening. Um, it doesn't matter anyway. We're just going to wash it. And I will be separating all the stems out into a separate bowl. We can chop them real fine and work them into the chili. It'll be great. washed one bunch I think this is baby kale mm. maybe taking a knife it's rubber banded so I cut it right around the rubber banded area to separate the stems this way it fits into my bowl for rinsing better too and then we'll use the stems for our chili monotonous live in terms of cooking processes since it'll be a lot of rinsing green so ask whatever questions you'd like or we can just keep it nice and quiet today I will say chances are 
Um, I probably won't go live more often than once a week now because I started taking on a little more hours with burlap and barrel, so I have a little bit more work to do during the week, um, which is why I'm probably be going to do, oh my god, my words, I'm probably going to be doing a little more cooking and food prep on the weekend so that once the week begins, I don't have to like pause and make meals, I can just eat leftovers. Let's see if it's escarole. Let's see if this is better. You ready? She's a little purple veined on the front, a little more green on the back, still purpley veined, but not purpley shaded. Mmm. Creamy, nutty, not really bitter. Hi, Tuna Bebe. You wanna hop up here? You wanna come up? Oh, it's spicy. Oh, it's spicy. It's spicy. It's peppery. Mmm. Yummy. Tuna, do you wanna come up on the chair? Hop up. What if I give you a treat treat? Do you wanna treat treat? Come up. Tuna. No way. You love temptations. Yeah, you're purring, girl. You know you want it. Come up. Up. Can we do it? Can we train Tuna? Meow. Come on, baby. Come on, Tuna. Okay, tuna does not like commands, clearly. Not as food motivated as Fred. Tuna. Baby girl. Yeah, come on. Here's what I want you to do. Yeah, baby. So yummy. All right, I think that's it.
Welcome back to Human Vision. So yesterday in New York City, it rained all day. And then today it was super sunny, kind of colder, a little bit windy. It felt a little bit wintry. It's a very confusing time for humans. I'm sure it's a very confusing time for plants as well. I am not looking forward to this kind of whiplash of seasons losing their genres. I feel like it's gonna gradually cause more and more like food crises in terms of plants blossoming when warm temperatures hit in the middle of winter and then going through a spring chill and then dying and then we just won't have crops that year. Um, but until then, we're staying alive. I have a lot of boogers stuck in there so don't look very carefully. It's very painful for me to try to like rub my nose and get rid of mucus that's building up in there. I'm trying to like water it out um, because my Piercing artist basically said that it's going to scab where he pierced it and every time I like finick with it, it's going to loosen the scab and it's going to cause that wound to not be able to heal as fast. So I'm really, really trying not to touch it, but gotta say, I probably woke myself up like four times last night just because I felt like there was something on my nose and I went to do this and as soon as I touched it, I woke up and realized that like, oh, that's right, I have a ring in my nose. So it's gonna take a little bit of adjusting. continue to sort out our stems here. Do you want to look at me de-veining de my tail or do you want to look at baby tuna? Baby tuna. I know my pet voice is very annoying but it's very involuntary. I promise you. I don't even realize when my voice lifts three octaves when I start talking to baby tuna. We shocked each other. Did you feel that spark? Yeah, we're in love, clearly. My other life updates is, let's see, I took on more burlap and barrel hours. Um, I have reached approximately a full week of like emotional psychological burnout regarding Palestine. So I've been relatively numb. I've been turning to news as a way of like digesting it as dark comedy. Um, I don't know how y'all are feeling and processing. I don't know if y'all are feeling like guilt about how little movement we've managed to create in all of this genocide. Um, but I feel like my body has definitely slammed on the brakes and I haven't been able to like feel much. Even my physical fatigue, which I still feel concentrated in my lower back and kidneys, has become a sort of normal. Um, so every day 
I just feel a baseline exhaustion and it's become normal now. I'd be very curious to know how you guys have been processing these last few weeks. Um, but that's where I'm sitting right now. I am going to be moving very slowly today with rinsing greens. So if you actually want to see me cook, you might want to check back in like 35 minutes is my best estimate. Um, otherwise, this is what I'll be doing. The other life update is I went on my final first date today in this round of Hinge. I would say this round has lasted approximately two months, slightly under maybe. Um, my last date today was with someone that I had swiped on almost three weeks ago and they only matched with me like a week ago. So maybe it's been four weeks since I first swiped on them, actually, now that I think about it. And uh, it was a very fascinating meeting because I think I finally found someone who is as Eeyore as I am in real life. I don't think I've ever felt so comfortable with being um, as cynical and negative as I was on this date and feeling like they were not bogged down by it um, because I felt like they were on the same page of worldview as I am. Um, part of what fascinated me about this person when we first chatted on Hinge was that his coworkers call him Eeyore. And I laughed at that. And so we were both two Eeyores. Um, <sighs> That was, that was a fascinating experience. Um, the date lasted approximately four hours and we kind of just talked. It concerned me that he was not hungry. Um, we met at two, we met up for bubble tea and then I asked him if he was hungry and he said not really. And we continued to talk for four hours, which meant by the time we parted, it was six. And like, it's weird when somebody doesn't want to eat for six hours. I ate, we went into a noodle shop because it was really cold outside today and I couldn't sit outside anymore when the sun started getting shadier. Um, but he did not eat. So that was something that was strange to me. but maybe he just wasn't hungry. I thought it was a, a surprisingly peaceful meeting, I suppose. We kind of like mutually trauma dumped on each other a little bit regarding our backgrounds. Which is, as the kids say, par for the course. Um, for, for most of my first dates, I end up trauma dumping on them in one way or another. I don't know, what do normal people talk about on first dates? What do y'all talk about on first dates? Is this edible? Oh. I don't know what that was.
roll it up in a paper towel and then put the paper towel in a plastic bag and then I leave it open like this. We have a lot of greens, you know, we got a lot of greens to, to, to wash. And also, we should probably eat this egg. <laughs> Grandma keeps giving me her eggs. I think she's really tired of eggs. So we'll eat that eventually. I would just say where the conversation where the conversation takes you after tell me a little bit about yourself. Oh, I never asked that question. That sounds like an interview. Um, I'm at a loss with politics since accepting the pattern that when life starts to feel stable for the lower mid class, the powerful capitalist narcissists start to get bored. Mm. Wait, you don't eat in public? Can I ask why? You just don't feel comfortable in a public setting? Fascinating. Um, Siobhan, I think it's hilarious that out of all the things you could have specified, you use cottagecore as an example. Is there something you would like to share with the class about yourself? Because <laughs> I did not expect cottagecore to be your example of choice. Um... I have not thought about using a Sharpie to write the date on the eggshell because I usually just eat it within two days that they give it to me. Um, KCS says they need conflict in the world to feel the thrill of huge gets. Mm, manipulating, impacting the, in, the economy to benefit themselves or her others. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, back to washing my veg. I'm gonna try the stem of one of these. Mm. Okay. OCD emetophobia. Interesting. Anxiety after eating food that I didn't cook myself. Wow. Okay. Thank you for sharing. New world perspectives. I learn them every day. These are definitely more of a salad item, I'd say. Whatever they are, I'm not sure exactly what they are. But yeah, salad material. Tuna, are you hungry after all those treats? We can get you something. Give me a few minutes. Do you know how much more amazing it would be if we didn't have copyright bans on videos? I could play all my favorite music and like jam out on these lives. But alas, capitalism makes everything a bore. Capitalism be making everything a bore. Okay, you know what? You know how some Therapies encourage you to be positive and like have a gratitude journal. Why don't we practice something unconventional for our time and our crowd, my general audience, I think. Why don't we try to come up with as many beneficial results of capitalism as possible tonight? You wanna to try that?
Okay, I got this huge bunch of, I don't know what this is. It looks almost like cilantro parsley lettuce. Here's what the stems look like. But I have no idea what this is. And it's a huge bunch. Mustardy. Oh my god. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> that is really spicy. Holy shit. It's like a buttery mustard too. bunch of greens the stems are very very tender it could be really good in a dumpling soup so I think I might segregate out those greens for like blanching those stems for blanching um let me see if I have enough containers to hold all of these goodies I was thinking today how on my solo walk to the farmer's market, um, which is rare these days because normally grandma comes with me, but I was alone today with my thoughts and I was thinking about how um, far I've come in terms of being willing to spend more money on food. I know I've mentioned this before, but when mom was alive, she always encouraged me to buy better quality food, even though she herself never did. Um, but I was mentioning to my uncle and my aunt the other day about like my relationship failures and how, you know, I keep thinking about how mom really just married her first real boyfriend. And I've always wondered if she should have dated more people. Um, and I was thinking about how sometimes I live and choose for myself. And there's a certain kind of secondary enjoyment that comes with feeling like I'm also sharing my, my new life of sorts with mom who never got to live it on her own. It is a sort of delusional thought that I think is a very special side effect of, of people going through grief is like all these like random organic ways where you find possibilities of keeping your loved one alive with you in this in this realm um so yeah just sharing some thoughts
room in the fridge for greens. All right, I think I need more bags. I'm really grateful for all of the failed so-called failed relationships I think my mind shift my mind shift is happening in recent years where I'm starting to reframe failures into learning experiences and um, I'm trying to do things that make me feel comfortable while also checking in with the other person to make sure they don't mind what I'm doing for my own discomfort I think oftentimes we don't do things because we're afraid of hurting the other person but I also think that we should treat the other person with a lot of agency and we should allow them to answer for themselves what they find comfortable and uncomfortable before we assume intentions and preferences. It is certainly something that I wish my partners would allow me to do um, instead of just deciding for me based on common courtesies and protocols that society seemingly randomly tend to agree upon the social contract may not apply to every person you meet so how how do we allow people to choose for themselves um in every moment allowing for change of preferences to happen too i feel like in the same way that we say like oh the constitution is a living document i feel like our relationships should be as well you know Uh, my mom jeans today are actually from mom and I just dropped some spicy oil on them today I'm very sad about it. You see those two dots. Yeah, very very bummed about it But oh well she gave these to me and they've gotten so many compliments. I guess they make my ass look great. So thanks mom My butt continues to deflate with the absence of gym weightlifting I am hoping to acquire some kettlebells so I can build up slightly more butt. Maybe not as big of a butt as when I had access to the gym because I'm not going to be buying like 80 pound barbells, but I don't know. It's been kind of sad watching my butt deflate. But worse things can happen. What do you have on your chin, baby girl? Tuna, what's on your chin, baby girl? Okay. Watching me? That's cool. You can watch me. weight workouts anymore because I don't have weights and I stopped going to the gym because of long COVID. Uh, I've lost energy to work out the way I used to and I also don't feel comfortable being around sweaty unmasked people. There's only so much I can do to protect myself. I'm usually like one of three people who are actually wearing masks at the gym. 
if nobody else is wearing a mask, you know, I feel like the rate of transmission just increases, even though I'm the one wearing a mask. It, it would be way more helpful for other people to wear a mask, but because people find consideration inconvenient um, and people don't feel like COVID is much of a big deal anymore, I get it. You know, I go on these dates and if we go into a restaurant, I'm not gonna be staying masked. So obviously there's a lot of chances for exposure if you wanna have a social life. That's just the reality, I suppose now. Um, so, you know, I'm not judging people as hard as I used to about not wearing masks, but, you know, I go on dates every so often, but if I were to go back to the gym, I would do that almost every day or at least three, four times a week, which is a much more frequent uh, occurrence than going on dates. So it's just a much higher rate of exposure. And, you know, the gym, huffing and puffing air, there's just a lot more aerated shit going around in gyms. Okay, back to me. I'm gonna charge you back up, sorry. Sorry to take you away from Tuna, but you'll see her when we feed her. too good to pass up today since I'm normally never at the farmer's market that late. Let's try the mustard stem. Four bunches for 12. Mm -hmm. do a very dangerous thing so went to my favorite bubble tea place Anda in Elmhurst 
and uh, I got the cheese foam, but I didn't finish the cheese foam. And I made some matcha this morning, a matcha latte for myself, and I didn't finish it because I was getting super hyped up on it. So I think I'm gonna pour the matcha in here and finish it, but uh, it's probably a bad idea to be drinking matcha at eight, but we'll do it. Fuck it. Fuck it. I've I've lost it. Whatever this is. Not sure. Love their rubber bands. They're like not too thick and not too skinny and the perfect length to go around three or four times. All the cheese foam is still on the bottom. We got a nice little swirly action going. Okay. You know what? I'll let it ice up a little bit. It feels a little lukewarm. Um, okay, let's continue putting our greens away. I saved the salad container for the most frilly poofy. paper towels but I do find that more paper towels lead to a little less rot especially when I have so much greens holding water and I just killed the grub sorry grub you were probably enjoying your leafy green and I ended your life. I am a grub oppressor. Oh yeah, we're definitely gonna need another container for all of this. Let's eat another one. 
I'm more prepared for the spice now. Oh, I remember what this is. This is wasabi greens. I really should have picked a smaller bunch. Ooh. Very wasabi forward, for sure. I can always reuse them, you know, because they're they're clean. They're just tucked with wet greens. Afterwards, I can use them for whatever. I don't really listen to podcasts, but if you have recommendations, I'll consider it. There are very few podcasts that can retain my, my attention. And I agree, taro is usually my favorite flavor for boba, but it's usually artificial. Most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time it's an artificial flavor. Um, with a lot of like those pre-made powders, they can be high in hydrogenated fats because they're so processed. So that's just something that as I get older, I start to feel a little bit not good about eating. But taro definitely was once upon a time my go-to bubble tea flavor, for sure. Guys, this is a lot of greens for 12 bucks. And just think about how expensive those salads are and how many salads I can make myself right here. It's time for a bubble tea break. Ah, <gasps> Suzuku. Welcome back. Long time, long time since I've seen you in a live. Hope you're doing well. Hi to your mom and dad. I also made a matcha protein smoothie. <laughs> I think we're going to add a little bit of that in. Um, not because I need the protein, but just because I actually want a little more matcha. This one has cashew and oat in it, so extra creamy.
This is like a death knell to me falling asleep today. Um, yeah, I don't think I will listen to crime podcasts. TBH is not my thing. Yum. Super satisfied. I think we should feed tuna. This is what she eats. She's got a little bit of a tummy issue. She's so she's on Hills prescription diet digestive care with chicken. Sensi stomach. I do the usual thing of warming it up with a little bit of water. Um, I don't know if you remember from the last live, but Tuna's had eight teeth pulled. So she is still recovering with her gumsies. She'll be with me until second week of April. I overheated it a little bit, so I'll let it cool for a few minutes. And then we'll feed her. In the meantime. Let's eat a mystery green. Let's try to guess what June bought. Kale? Collard green? Not sure. Um, that's neither. I don't know what that is. It's not bad. None of these greens are bad. And what I love about farmer's market greens is they are all so distinctively flavored, naturally, purely. Um, it's like a learning experience with all of them. It's definitely my favorite part. Unfortunately, I did very poor planning and my laptop's about to run out of battery too, so I will not be as attentive with um, comments very soon when the laptop battery runs out. I'm so sorry. I was not planning on going live tonight, but I came home and I thought, hey, it's been a while. I have all these greens to process. I should probably use up that tomato sauce. I should probably start using up that chicken stock too. And I thought, you know what? Let's just go live and get this shit sorted for my week. I try to be good to ourselves, so. I'm not prepared, but I am doing it. Are you at charge yet? 96%, go us. All right, let's tempt this. It's warm, not hot. This is the best way to tempt her food. I'm sorry if it feels gross to y'all, but I need flesh contact. Shall we then? Tuna! 
Baby. Oh, were you on the bed? Hi. What a cutie patootie. Enjoy your food with strangers. I do have three cloves of garlic. I could be putting it into the chili tonight, but I think we're just gonna go with my burlap and barrel spice cabinet because for some reason, I am so lazy and tired this week and I just can't bring myself to peel three garlic cloves. It hurts me to say, but I almost would be okay with them going bad than to have to clean a garlicky knife and board today. Um, so that's how I'm doing. I think we have to allow ourselves to have these days. Um, yes, there is always multiple reasons to boycott all huge companies, absolutely. Do you get the ASMR of the cat licking the plate? Yeah, how's the food? Mom, if you're watching, here's Tuna. She's much nicer than Fred. I think you would like her too. Tuna and I have been snuggling. She does not meow all night. She only croaks a little bit when she's excited for food or when she wants to play. And uh, in the morning, she gets hungry, but she doesn't bother me. Um, and she just hops onto the bed and like walks over to my head and gives me a little good morning greeting. The bad thing about, not the bad thing, but one of the flaws of Tuna is she doesn't finish her food the way that Fred cleans the plate. Um, baby, did you like? Did you like it? Was it good? Okay, bye-bye. She's a gorgeous girl. She's very pretty. But she doesn't let it get to her head. What a role model, right? We're using the big pot today since we got a lot of greens. taxes that you desire when I visit for sure. First thing we're gonna do is add in our chicken fat with our chicken broth. Thank you. 
for gelatiny. Our beans that we cooked last time will go in now. tomato sauce. Since the greens will release a lot of water, I'm trying to not add too much uh, additional water aside from the chicken broth. I don't want my chili too loose. I also don't want to make too huge of a batch because I not eat that that much chili I mean I can but I will be farting continuously which not even I can stand sometimes you know so I don't want to do that to Tuna she she got scared by one of my farts the other day it was quite entertaining hi Winnipeg The next ingredient is going to be our new bag of unexpired TVP. Applause for unexpired stuff. We have until November 8th, 2024, which is this year to use. TVP depending on how much liquid we get left with but I think that's a lot of liquid actually um, I'm gonna add in some corn which we will rinse off a little bit would always rinse off and even soak frozen veggies because she didn't believe in the sanitation of them and when I worked at Delish we would often run them underneath water to get the kernels to defrost faster which is actually a really fun hack so now I just rinse them I don't I don't go full hardcore with mom's method of soaking them but a rinse to wash off all the ice and hopefully give them a little bit of a cleaning action, a little shower. See what y'all have been saying. We're getting a summer downpour. Huh. Ooh, cast iron grilled chicken breast yum. 
soy allergy. Unfortunate. I feel sad for you. I'm so sorry. I actually do feel like soy gives me a lot of gas and cramping too. Soy and chickpeas are my two top legume offenders in terms of the flatulence and uh, gas department. So okay, as that boils away, let's see what spices we can put in here. Definitely white pepper. Oh, chickpeas are a great offender too. So we have soy and chickpeas in this chili. Yeah, I'm gonna suffer quite a bit, for sure. I'm gonna go in with some purple peppercorn. some cumin. Hi Tuna. It's going with some smoked paprika. Not throw up in barrel. I know. I'm trying to <gasps> clearly does not want to live anymore. Can't stand being the lesser spice. Tried to commit suicide just now. Tuna is a very darling cat. She protects me every time I pee. Um, do you see her? She's hiding behind the chair. What a cutie. Tuna. Look at your little head peeking out from the side of the chair. Yeah, we're talking about you. Hi, baby girl. Tuna. You want to smell paprika? Um, Ethan also gave me this sample of pepper soup spice. Um, ideal seasoning for pepper soups, other African soup and dishes. It has, this is not burlap and barrel by the way, this is just like a sample spice. Um, Kalabash nutmeg, Piper Ganese or Uziza seed. I don't know these things at all. Chili pepper, alligator pepper, garlic ginger, Uda. Yes, black pepper. A little bit of that. Why not? I also want to add a little bit of turmeric in this one. Can't explain why. We'll do that and purple shallot and toasted onion.
The spices I'm adding right now is like less about flavor and just more about using up stuff and I feel like the turmeric and black pepper will keep me a little bit more healthy this week. I think it's just placebo, but especially in the amount that I use, let's go in with a little bit more. Um, but hey, better than nothing. black garlic, which has been so good. A little bit of wild Timor, which is kind of like a fragrant citrusy citron peppercorn. We're gonna go in with a little bit of my coffee sugar. A little sweetness, a little coffiness. And we're about to get crazy because I'm gonna add some chia seeds. <laughs> Health? I don't know. Also, a great thickener. <clears throat> I wanna get the super stewy and then we're going to add in our greens our green stems <coughs> Ooh. is that enough spices or should we add a few more more. Y'all are really Let's go in with some sweeter spices. So we have wild mesquite, which will give it that cocoa-iness and some cinnamon verum, which is a more floral cinnamon and less sweet. Um, and I'm not, I'm not going to go crazy on um, anything spicy because I, I fear that like all the stems will kind of add a natural spice. So we're gonna keep it a little bit tamer for my esophagus. more we're gonna go in with coriander which pairs really well with cumin and lifts it up in a floral light way some black lime for acidity um, to perk up the tomato sauce and some nigella seed which I feel like will also add a health benefit to my concoction I'm already smelling the cocoiness of everything Are we ready to call it quits? Mm hmm, this is gonna be.
be a weird chili, y'all. Weird ass chili. All right. So this is the stewy texture we are down to right now. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Let's start adding in our greens. Oh, bay leaf. Okay. Great idea. We're going to go with some Caribbean bay leaf, which is a little bit sweeter and fresher tasting to me than laurel. Thank you for that suggestion. I don't know what bay leaves do, honestly, but I like this Caribbean bay leaf. It does for me what no other dried bay leaf has ever done before. It adds a slight sweet creamy lift. It's never detectable on its own. It just adds a certain gauzy layer of softness. Yes, I do think it is placebo. so much health with every bowl of chili this week. I do feel like the way that I cook for myself is definitely not really for presentation, definitely not for aesthetic, definitely not for like pleasure sometimes. Like I don't always like look forward with hunger for the stuff that I cook, but I do feel like these days I like the way it tastes and also I like the nutritional value it provides. I've been trying to add more veggies into my diet and I think the farmer's market has definitely been helping me accomplish that. So you know, just a girl without health insurance trying to stay alive as best as she can. Preventative care starts with diet. I guess the chicken broth isn't vegan, but if you wanted to vegan fry it, obviously you can use water or veggie broth or anything. It is possible that I add a little MSG to this batch this week. Have not decided yet. Ooh, those stems uh, smell really spicy actually. In a delicious way in a crisp, peppery jalapeno way, almost. Farmer's Market bag of apples has risen in price. We've gone from $6.75 to $7.50. That's a 75% raise on a $6.50 bag. That's more than 10% price hike. Um, I have seen prices go, uh, go up across the board in the last month. I don't know if y'all have noticed that happening, but get ready, y'all. 
We might be hitting another round of guillotine. Did I add garlic powder? I don't think I did. Let's add some garlic powder. So I'm not going to cook the greens until they're completely like broken down. I'm actually just going to look for bright greenness because most of these stems were actually quite tender when I tasted them. So I think this will be like a chili salad, but cooked. What, what do we call this concoction? Cooked chili salad? So glad we went with a bigger pot on this, honestly. <gasps> Bay leaf is definitely not placebo, okay. MSG is a must have, okay. This is the best form of body doubling. Okay, cool. I wanna be the best body double you've ever had. Is that a pickup line? That should be a pickup line. Body double sounds kind of sexy in a sci-fi way, you know? True, good memory. I did add black garlic. But I feel like black garlic does not contribute the same amount of like garlicky garlickiness as garlic powder does, you know? Mmm. Taco salad. Ugh. Matcha, latte, bubble tea, protein shake, you heard it here first, y'all. Bubble tea shops should have a protein shake available. Can you imagine the sales on that? Think about it. As the greens are cooking, I'm noticing there is quite a bit of liquid leaking out. So in order to help balance that out, we're gonna do a little flaxseed. So we got chia and flax in here. This will help it gel a little bit. can't say I don't make shit weird. That's one thing I do best. All right, we're done. We've done it again, folks. We've done it again. I'm going to eat this egg with this chili.
This will be a great test for our seasoning as long as I let it cool off a little bit. But I'm already missing the MSG, so let's add that in. I don't know why, but I always feel like MSG tastes better when you add it after the heat's off. Kind of like how I like to add lemon zest into things and lemon juice. Sometimes I don't like how it tastes when it gets added during the cooking process. All right. Greens and beans. I like that too. We can keep it simple. What is the verdict on the chili? I'm not sure yet. We're gonna have to let it cool. I shall also sprinkle this with a little bit of MSG for accuracy. Mmm. A lot of smoked paprika. I can taste it immediately. Mmm. I think the coffee sugar, the coffee part of the coffee sugar is also emboldening that smokiness a little bit. I can't taste the coffee on its own. I can't taste the mesquite. I can't taste the cinnamon. Nothing is really like standing out as much as that smokiness is standing out. I also think that like African pepper spice is standing out quite a bit actually. Mm. I think this will taste a lot better after it sits for sure. On the second bite, I'm getting more of the nigella seed. It has that almost like dank onion garlic Indian vibe. The nigella seed goes really, really well with these greens, which have a mustardy taste to them. And I feel like mustard seed is quite common in Indian cuisine. So it tends to go really well flavor wise with the nigella, in my opinion. I think overall, I might need a little more salt. Or MSG. Or both. Or, or we use this Icelandic kelp, which is seaweed, which might actually give it a salty marine surf and turf vibe. Let's try it. Mm-hmm. A little bit of kelp. The kelp makes it taste a little more vegetal as well. I'm gonna add some fish sauce. Just to my sample test batch. Let's see if it works in terms of flavor. And this is where we get fun. Just testing random shit out. Mmm. Definitely adds the saltiness. It might be bringing out the kelp a little too much. 
Let's just go with salt for now. Try a scoop of our updated formula. This is just more reason for me to get my veggies in because on my date, I just ate a huge platter of like spicy chili oil, super salty um, tripe and beef tendon. My date did not want any of that, understandably, but I am in sore need of vegetables today. So that is what much better flavor feels more complete feels more cohesive works better with the greens salt can do wonders The last thing I'm going to add in here is a little bit of celery leaf, dried celery leaf. I think it'll help the greens kind of marry together with the rest of the ingredients that we have here. Breaking, folks but it is very edible and I am very very happy and looking forward to eating all these greens tonight I'm probably gonna jar this up and log off and go rest and maybe watch a movie or just chill or stare at tuna You did say be careful with that pepe seasoning, yup. It is strong, it makes itself known. The greens don't really soak up the sauce. They do get coated in it. Mmm. Siobhan, do you have the Icelandic kelp? Vegan calamari rings, interesting. Um, chili oil soaked tripe and tendon. It's usually a mainstay in most Chinese restaurants that sell noodles. Chinese restaurants that sell noodles, like a casual restaurant, they usually have like a cold cut menu. Um, usually there's sliced pig ear, braised, um, spicy oil, beef tendon, um, spicy oil, honeycomb tripe, some tofu offerings, like bean curd offerings, some pickled veggies. Those tend to be like my favorite. But unfortunately, they're supposed to be like something that goes along with your main meal. So they're usually overloaded with the, the oil and the spice. And since I was eating by myself, I didn't want a whole bowl of noodles. So then I just ate way too much sodium and oil. It was delicious though. I do wish I had rice to eat it with, which I didn't. But next time I'll bring my own rice. Or have a date who's open to eating with me. Chinese appetizers are usually cold meat dishes or cold veggie dishes. They're usually, unless it's cucumber and tofu and century eggs, they're usually cooked and then cooled. I feel like a lot of like American friends, like Western, white, American friends, not even white, just American. Any kind of like native born American. I think they have, they, they just don't like the idea of cold meats, but guys, you have cold cuts too like bologna 
black forest ham. Those are cold meats. Like the Chinese appetizers, same thing, except we just have really delicious chili oil coated chicken or delicious tendony beef slices or crunchy, crunchy, bouncy pig ears. I don't know. <sighs> Such foods scare certain friends. And that is when I know that the depths of friendship are shallow. I can taste the celery. Cel celery. <laughs> I'm tired. Um, thank you for joining me, but I'm probably gonna peace out after jarring. So you can peace out whenever you want to, or you can stay while I jar. And if you do say, I'll try to go hunt down tuna. And we can go wish her a happy week ahead. And she will wish you the same. And this is when I would cue some delightful outro music that I can't play because copyright laws. But just imagine a world without copyright laws. Did we come up with many um, good effects of capitalism? I must have missed it. I don't know if I feel motivated enough to go back and look for them. Well, thank you for playing the game if you did. Do I not have a lid for this jar? Yikes. Yikes. Hi, Ashley. Um, tendon is usually more of a thing than tripe, but sometimes you might have to go to the more mom and pop shops for noodles. Um, cause like, honestly, I don't think tripe is a huge seller. So maybe not all restaurant restaurants, like sit down restaurants have them. But if you go to like more of a food court, mom and pop situation, they might have it up front in a glass case. <laughs> Jar drama. You guys are funny. Well, if there is no lid, then there is no lid. 
and there's nothing I can do about that. It's hilarious because the jars that I have the most of are the ones that I don't have any lids to. That's just the way life goes, you know? Question for you all. Do you think two Eeyores sound good in a relationship together? Be honest. My gut feeling is no, not because of incompatibility or too much negativity, because I don't I don't think unless you're troubled by your own mental health that it will be like catastrophic. But I just feel like I would rather be with someone with a different world perspective so I can learn their perspective. Say my personality is an Eeyore and I meet another person who's also very much philosophically an Eeyore in terms of how they view the world. I just don't know if I'm going to find it intriguing. I feel like if there's someone out there who has a different worldview than I do and they find me interesting and I find them interesting, that would be a much more interesting dynamic to be together and learn from each other why we have the world views that we have. And like, maybe I can then not be an Eeyore as much. I'm not relinquish relinquishing my Eeyore-ness. I'm just saying, what if, what if? You know? I feel like there is some sort of like um, novelty that we seek in being with someone. I don't know if I want to date myself because I feel like I get enough of myself. There's only so much I can, there's only so much E or mush I can stomach and I make enough mush. That's what I'm feeling. Let's see his thoughts. You think it's worth a shot? <laughs> piglet and Eeyore? What is Piglet like? Wait, what is Piglet? Explain this Piglet Eeyore thing. Because I don't know if I know... Piglet has always seemed kind of boring to me. More supportive, I agree, for sure. Timid and scared. Mmm, anxious. I agree. Yeah, no piglet for me. <laughs> Sad trombone sound going off near you. Aw, piglet. Very optimistic. Mm. So should I date a poo if poo is carefree and body positive?
If given the chance, which character would you date out of Winnie the Pooh? I don't need a Tigger. Absolutely fucking not. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Tigger is my least favorite character on there. <laughs> Did I leave Delish? Girl, where you been? Somebody follow him up. Get him up to date. Um. Rocking crop tops, body positive. Okay, but what about Kanga? Everybody forgets about Kanga, right? I don't know owl at all. How would you define owl? You have to... Kind of too quiet backgroundy. Christopher Robin's purpose is to be able to imagine his stuffed animals coming into life. He's a little... He's a little delusional. He's a little delulu. You feel like there are optimistic Eeyores in this world. Aww. Owl is a know-it-all but knows nothing? I don't want an owl. Okay, I need to put those greens away, but I'm off for the night. I'm draining very quickly. Um, let's go find tuna. She's just sitting in the corner, being real quiet. Hi. She loves this corner. Hi. 
girly. All right, folks, have a good night. Have a good week. Take care of yourself. Make sure you're sleeping and eating and drinking and vitamining and tuna-ing. See ya.